three, two, one. Next on the Real Teens Pittsburgh. Let's get ready to Google Google as we take you inside the Google Pittsburgh offices. It's not your typical workplace. What's this? A Kenwood roller coaster in an office? We talk to Google employees who love working here in the new Pittsburgh. And we show you how the old Pittsburgh has become something more modern. Our own real team, Diara, took us to the mobile sculpture workshop where teenagers like us learn welding to make sculptures honoring our neighborhood. And in case you missed our first episode, we take you to our premiere party and revisit some of our first show. We even take you to some of our new fans, some who happen to be our parents. And coming up next is the Real Teens Pittsburgh. So like, what are the Real Teens? I don't think anyone knows what the show is. <laughs> um, it's a little unorganized. <laughs> Take a look through my lens. I'll show you a few things. It's a show about teenagers in the city of Pittsburgh with the opportunity to be creative and make your own stories and do your thing. And we're all like really cohesive and we understand what we need to do and we get it done. I'm Carl Corlander, the president and CEO of Steel Town Entertainment Project. Felt like Hollywood. The big time, the red carpet, cameras flashing, people talking and mingling, smiles all around. And welcome to the premiere of the Real Teams Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. Congratulations and welcome. We held our premiere at the Filmmakers Melwood Theater in North Oakland. Many of our family and friends came. They applauded. But actually, some couldn't believe we pulled it off. And that includes some of us. It went well, but we have a lot more work to do. In case you missed our first show, we want to show you what you missed. We visited Tolan FX, where Mr. Steve Tolan himself showed us his blood splattering technique for movies and TV. He showed us his monstrous creations. And we took you to the Strip District Music Festival, where we met some really cool musicians and learned how technology meets music composition. We felt so good at our premiere party. A lot of hard work paid off. Our own Hazel put it into perspective for us. You know like how you have a whole cake, but you only get the corner of the cake when you want the whole thing. Well, that whole cake is Hollywood. And that little corner was the premiere party. I got a little taste of Hollywood. And we would use what we learned to become even better as we produced a somewhat exclusive second show with a visit to Google Pittsburgh. In the meantime, we enjoy what our premiere party guests say about our first show. It inspires us to work even harder. I liked monster making. I got to see like how all the special effects worked on it. Because when I went to um, the other one, with monster casting, I saw how the special effects worked on um, actual like stage. So it was pretty cool to see all of that. I thought it was nice. It was really nice. Good opportunity. Um, I'm excited. I hope I can give him some ideas to share to make more episodes and it's become a big thing for the um, youth. It's a wonderful opportunity for our youth. So. Proud of all of them. They've put in such hard work. And I'm just so proud of Joshua Perry and just for everything he's done for the last few years and I attribute it to your internship with uh, Still Today. She was great. I was yeah, so, yeah. Proud, of so proud of her. Because <laughs> usually in school she's all shy and everything. And she's Quiet, so. Yeah. So, really like Kendra's an inspiration to us. Does it make you want to be a real teacher too? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought it was very, very entertaining. Um, I think it was a good show. It showed the kids doing stuff that they have never done before. So it was very interesting. Oh, I thought it was very um, good. It got me a chance to look into what she's doing every Wednesday, really putting it into perspective, the time she's been spending um, over here at Still Town. That was, um, looks like it was something fun, educational, and that would benefit her in the future. I thought it was great. And we even had professional educators from around the region who came and talked about what they liked in our first episode. 
I thought the show was really great. I love to see the kids collaborating with each other. I love to see them working on an extended project and really orienting to a shared problem, learning in new and interesting ways that are meaningful to them. I, I thought the show was incredible. I grinned the entire time I was watching it, and I learned a lot, not only about the kids and filmmaking, but about Pittsburgh. So. I expect to watch it to, to learn about the city, not just about filmmaking and about the children, but about the city I live in. The skills that the kids bring forward are, it's really exactly what we expect to see from our high school graduates. Problem solving, creativity, collaboration, teamwork, um, the skills that were necessary to put that show together were all demonstrated by those kids. Yeah, if we can bring that type of experience into the classroom um, in a more consistent manner, then we'll send graduates out into the workforce that are much better prepared to be successful. So what's the coolest part of this experience so far? Um, wrapping the first episode. The, the pilot episode. That was the best part of this experience. Them all knowing that they can do it, that it can be done, um, and, you know, it's not as hard the next time around. And next, we go to one of our biggest assignments yet, a trip to Google Pittsburgh in Bakery Square. Our parents and grandparents know this site as the Old Nabisco Bakery. Mmm, cookies. Thank you guys for being here today. We're super excited to have you. And this is really, really cool what your folks are doing. I wish I had access to the same sort of opportunities when I was your age. And we were super excited to be there. We use Google every day, but it's not every day Google lets in a camera crew, let alone a teen film crew. Google is one of the biggest and most confidential companies in the world. I think I was definitely excited and definitely nervous. Just getting our foot in the door was the toughest part. To get in the door, we had to pitch our ideas to Patrick Lenahan. Patrick's a global communications officer for Google. It was really cool because Patrick seemed really laid back and down to earth. And it, it, I was able to connect with him very easily, but it wasn't just me that was able to connect with him. It was a whole team film crew, and it was just so easy. And thankfully, he liked our idea. We told Patrick we wanted to know how Googlers got their start, what it takes to work for Google, and how Google helps the community. So when Patrick said yes, it was extremely exciting. No one was more shocked or excited than Gage. He has wanted to be a coder since he was six years old. Unfortunately, he soon found out our visit was scheduled for a day he would be in Washington, D.C. to take part in a special government career training program. When I heard we were going to Google, I was like, I cannot stay. I have to go to Google. I have to go to Google. Like, Google was the number one priority. Gage convinced his parents to let him cancel the trip, promising them a trip to Google was worth it. Uh, this is, as I said, all an all engineering office, so people are plugged in and coding away. Finally, we were about to get a look inside of Google. It was really unique. It was like something I've never seen before. It was really cool walking into Google because when we walked in, I didn't realize it at first, but we were actually walking through a vault door to where you actually needed to scan a security card to even gain access to. And it was really cool because it showed how top confidential Google was. I have heard that Google has an excellent working environment. So the first thing you're gonna see when we come in here um, is the game room and one of our micro kitchens. Cool. Game room is, you know, people to pull off steam. When you're not thinking hard about something, you can also oftentimes have your best ideas. Game room. And it had, you know, your ordinary games like pinball and pool table, but it also had some older games that, you know, people are familiar with, and it was like a mini Dave and Buster's. There was food. And any snacks and drinks and whatever, feel free to have them. Google kept a mixer from the old Nabisco bakery that used to be in this building. And they put in a replica of a roller coaster from Kennywood, setting Pittsburgh apart from other Google ones. Every Google office is different. No two are alike, and the reason is that in every office, the people that we hire, the people who live there, they care about the community that they're in, they're good neighbors, and they, they're very passionate about where they live, so every office reflects the community in existence. And maybe you noticed as we were walking, but conference rooms are named after different places around the area, different institutions that are familiar to Pittsburgh. John was most impressed by the library. 
Well, with the suit of armor in the corner and there was a staircase, there was like a twisty staircase and it was really quiet in there. And I just thought that was really cool. I was interested in some of the other perks. And you don't see food at work every day unless you work at a fast food restaurant. We were all interested in what you'll see next, our interviews with the people who work here. If you Google Google, you can learn a few things, like how the company has more than 60,000 employees around the world. Its employees are known as Googlers, and each site works on different projects. Some sites work on search, others on maps. Here in Pittsburgh, one of the biggest products is Google Shopping. It's a whole new way to search for products on the internet. It's a lot more convenient with Google Shopping because I don't have to go through all the other websites like Amazon, Wish, or eBay. Like, all of them are there. Many of us use Google Shopping. Aaron Cohen and Joel Donovan are among those working to make it even better. We're in charge of organizing the three billion plus products that you can buy online. And a lot of the content is generated automatically by algorithms, but sometimes that doesn't work out so well, and we need humans to go in and curate that stuff. And I make the tools that those humans use to, to make the catalog better. We wanted to know how Aaron, Joel, and other Googlers got their start, and what it takes to work here. So we began with the co-founder of Google Pittsburgh. Kamal Negum is the engineering director and site lead at Google Pittsburgh. So as site lead, I'm really responsible for talking to folks like you, talking to the community, really making sure that we have that deep connection with the different thriving parts of the Pittsburgh tech community. They said they partnered with colleges like Pitt and CMU, so that was good to hear. And make sure also that within the office that we really maintain a strong hotbed of innovation and collaboration and people feel really excited and motivated to come to work. So what were you doing when you were my age, about 16, 17? So I was in high school. Um, I was very passionate about computers then. I did a decent amount of sort of programming in my free time. I started college at 16, working with computers since I was 13, and that's really what I've done for play. I've actually been programming since like elementary school, right? Like my, my dad brought home a, a computer from the bank that he worked at and I played with it when I was like six. I remember climbing up on a, on a desk to get to the book that uh, explained how to write code in BASIC and taught myself BASIC. But not everyone has a coding background. Erin Cohen studied acting in school. She started out acting, but she found herself at Google. How does that even happen? I've done everything from work with professors at the University of Pittsburgh to running a creative arts program for small children. About three and a half years ago, um, this role came up and a friend of mine recommended that I apply and lo and behold, here I am. So yeah, it was quite an adventure. Erin is now a lead linguist here, helping to organize products for Google Shopping. It's a job she never imagined. Oddly, things that I learned outside of computer science are applicable, so communication skills, creative thinking, um, not being afraid to challenge yourself. I work on a team of all women, which is awesome. I would want to say to young girls, like, if it's interesting to you, it doesn't matter if you're the only girl in the class. Go for it. I really thought she was inspirational. I liked what she said. Gage was inspired by software engineer Joel Donovan who also owns a movie production company. What I learned about my future is that I could not only be a film producer, the, one, the producer I wanted to be, but I can also be a coder as well. It's a huge collaborative effort, and no one person uh, works on every aspect of it. It's a lot of the time, you don't even understand every aspect of it. In fact, it doesn't matter your position at Google. Three things are required to be successful creativity, collaboration, and the ability to solve problems. We don't, we don't necessarily look at problems and think of them as unsolvable. We look at problems and think of them like, wow, we just haven't figured out how to solve them yet. So like, let's go stand around the whiteboard until we figure it out. Everybody listens to everybody else. It's not top down. It's an organization where ideas come from everywhere. And we all strive to make the company and its products better. They very much value your ideas. Um, it's okay to have conflict as long as you're willing to work through that conflict. They definitely work as a team to get the job done. I learned that everybody has their own job and everybody's important in their own way. Which carries over to what we do while making this television show. Well, you just can't do it by yourself. You have to coordinate with the people that you're working with. And uh, I guess that Google and the film industry just have similar priorities that way. 
Kamal gave us another piece of advice we can use in any career. Make sure you're doing what you love, right? You're gonna be doing your career for a very long time and you know, you will change your career significantly, but make sure that at every point you're really doing something that you're passionate about. I have a question for you, Gage. Yep. Is there anything you're going to do differently going forward after this experience? I'm definitely gonna work harder. I'm definitely gonna turn on my creativity brain more. 10 years, I either plan to be producing a movie or working here at Google. Well, I hope that you're doing both of those things. Why not? Yeah. Great. Thanks, Thank Gage. You. The experience really opened my eyes to other career options rather than just staying in the same lane. I thought it was really cool. It was somewhere between cool and captivating. It exceeded my expectations. I thought it was really great. My name's Julian Ludwig, and I believe I'm the next Boogie Yogi here. Fifty million views? Google, I wish you never existed! Looking for your phone? Who are you? I'm Z, your guardian angel, second class. You wish Google didn't exist, so I'm here to lead you for a google -less world. You should probably call your boss and let him know you're running late. I don't have my phone. Where's my phone? Um, there's a house phone right over there. Okay, Google. Call Mr. Tarkanian. this map. Can't take this. Google is wow. Talk about witnessing changes in Pittsburgh's history. A former Nabisco plant becomes Google, and what was a steel furnace in Rankin becomes a massive outdoor art studio. We wouldn't have known about this place unless one of our own fires up about visiting the site of the Mobile Sculpture Workshop. Today, we're really lucky to be at the Cary Furnace in Braddock slash Rankin. The Cary Furnace is a really terrific environment, and at one point, a number of artists, myself included, began exploring the Cary Furnaces. It was left behind. And why not? It's a perfect place for the Mobile Sculpture Workshop. But first, we gotta tell you about this place. We couldn't believe the cool stuff here. Kind of a ghost of Pittsburgh's past. 
Our parents tell us stories about Pittsburgh when they grew up. Well, here it is. It's managed and preserved by the Rivers of Steel Group. And Tim Collin of the Mobile Sculpture Workshop says the historic place inspires artists. A historic destination in Pittsburgh that allows people to experience the environment of what was once a really active iron producing plant. But our piece here is the Cary Deer, which was made of materials from the site that we built. I think we built it about 15 years ago and it's kind of stood the test of time and still has some relevance here at the site. And I'm really fortunate to have made the piece with many interesting people, but we're all fortunate that the Rivers of Steel folks have recognized it as an asset to their goals and their mission, and so now it's, a, it's, a, it's also part of a tour destination. The blast furnaces here are more than 100 years old. They produced iron for the Homestead Works up until 1978. We were told the iron produced here was used to build landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge and the Empire State Building. The Cary Furnaces are a blast from the past. They make a perfect backdrop for the Mobile Sculpture Workshop. Here, young people like us learn the art. Yes, the art of welding. Using the fiery industrial method to produce sculptures like these. Young people like Nathan Barnes of Braddock and Javon Collins of Hazelwood join the workshop. They work with welding artist mentors over the summer to create public art, which is donated to various communities. These teenagers learn welding and artistic expression while the communities get sculptures reflective of their identity. Everyone wins. My aunt wanted me to get a summer job, so I went over to the church that's had an application. She told me about them. I didn't want to do it. Were you frightened at all? Yeah, I, I like, they was, if they be welding, I'd be all the way back. I didn't want to do it at all. Javon and Nathan and our real team, Diara, learned it was about so much more than welding. It was a way to create something that reflects the community. And I was like, who knows, maybe welding might be my thing. And then they started talking about community and how it helps out the community by finding its problems. And I was like, you know what, I like this program so much already. And I was like, I'm gonna be a part of this. I wanna help out the community. I'm from, well I live in Hazelwood, so it just so happened that the first culture was gonna be in Hazelwood and they, and they were like, they were asking me, what do you know about Hazelwood? If I didn't know that much, because some people don't know much about the uh, neighborhood unless it's something that they grew up around. So we went way back. The sculptures are symbolic to your neighborhood. It's not just something that they choose, it's something that the neighborhood chooses for you. And they even go out and they ask people who live in the neighborhood, like, what would you like to see? What would you like to know more about your neighborhood? That's how they choose the uh, sculptures and stuff. This sculpture sits in front of the Hazelwood Propel School. Diara joined the Mobile Sculptural Workshop after her art teacher told her about it. I was interested in signing up to the art. I didn't even know we got paid until like the end. So <laughs> I was more interested in welding. Art's important to the community. It just, it makes it look better and it's more interesting because when you go through a community and you see like a mural, you'll stop and look at it like, like what is it about? I guess it's like something, it's important to the members of the community because it's just something to remind them that their community is like important. That's exactly the goal of the Mobile Sculpture Workshop in communities across our region. Tim Collin is one of the organizers and an accomplished welding artist. He teaches his craft to young people like Diara, Javon, and Nathan. So the Mobile Sculpture Workshop is really a an extension of making artwork, but it also has some, some technical um, skill making benefits to our, our teens and our, our local youth that I'm really proud of. And I'm most proud of the team that actually produces the project as well. We have a really terrific group of young people who own the program, and it's an extension of themselves. Behind them is the workshop's first creation, an open book donated to the city of Braddock. The book that you see now is, is that symbolic gesture that will be eventually placed in, in the neighborhood of Braddock as a, as a public sculpture. And some of the bigger topics that were about the book is um, history and knowledge and communication as fundamental assets and strengths of, of the neighborhood that we're trying to uh, portray. That's the mission for all the welding creations of the Mobile Sculpture Workshop. Uh, mobile Sculpture Workshop was an extremely fun experience because it was something new and I, I would never have done this before if it wasn't for Mobile Sculpture Workshop. And I would recommend it because it's like it's something new and it like I got over my fair fire so <laughs> that was a plus. Is it fun? Yeah, it's extremely fun.
next time on The Real Teens Pittsburgh. It's a week filled with events dedicated to changing ways students learn. We'll take you inside Remake Learning Days and explain what it's all about. So much of the work to remake learning is not only about giving new platforms, but helping to support all of these institutions where you can thrive. We're learning so much about learning and the brain and this technological age. Plus, we take you to one of the coolest places in Pittsburgh. Find out what Tech Shop is all about. Um, Tech Shop is a maker space located in Pittsburgh. Things like welding equipment, tons of other tools that are just hard to come by otherwise. And you'll meet the winners of our Take a Shot film contest. See who has reason to celebrate next time on The Real Teens Pittsburgh. Can we get more that's cute? And action, enjoy yourselves. A little bit more enjoyment. <laughs> Uh, there's there's a phone, and why is this thing here? What is a cord? What? Why, is it to the why wall? are you connected to me? Our parents and grandparents know the site as the old Nabisco Bakery plant. Yummy, yummy, and my tummy. <laughs> no, I can't look into the camera. I gotta pee. I gotta pee. That wasn't me.